Hello, it's me, Miko's Impossible. Miko's, my name is Taffrey16, and welcome back to another reaction video, and welcome to my ninth reaction to Have I Got News for You. Technically, it's my tenth reaction, but I'm counting Have I Got News for Boris as a separate thing, because I can do whatever I want. But today, we are going to watch a very highly requested episode, probably the most requested episode that I hadn't done yet, hosted by Tom Baker. Alright, here we go. This is the, um, full extended version, by the way, the 40-minute version. Which you can probably already tell from the runtime of the video, but in case you're still wondering. <laughs> oh, he's fucking gone. Oh shit. That special effects, bitch. Good evening. <laughs> and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I used to be John Pertwee. <laughs> In the news this week, during the second half of a home game at Newcastle United, the temperature hits nearly 10 degrees. What the fuck? Bird's Eye reveals the on there? process behind their new cheesy fish fingers. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. I remember when that was a craze. And in a New York restaurant, everyone's happy to split the bill equally until one diner suddenly realizes he was the only one who didn't order a starter. <laughs> 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 On Ian I remember that footage tonight, too. Deputy leader of the Lib Dems, described in the newspapers recently as Gordon Brown's most trenchant critic. Not while I'm alive, he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Vince Cable MP. <clears throat> and with Paul Merton tonight is a comedian who recently said that the media present us with an unfolding picture of a world populated by life adult celebrities and sound bite spewing demagogues. Yes, well, that just about describes us all, I suppose. <laughs> yes. Chris Addison. <clears throat> In round one, we cover the stories of global significance. Paul and Chris, take a look at this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Not faulty towers. Oh. That poor vampire. <laughs> Yes, this is uh, so Jonathan. It's Jonathan Ross. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, there's Russell leaving his house. Oh, uh, God. And uh, this has been a big fuss. Uh, I, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage over this because I don't listen to his radio show, so I, I was no way I could actually hear what was said in, in any shape or form. So how on earth did you find out what was said, Paul? How did you do that? Well, luckily, I tuned into the many media that was available. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this phone call that was Very put nice. into Andrew Sachs, I was able to hear it over and over again. <laughs> so you were in the lucky position of being able to be offended time after time after time. At my own convenience. That's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> That just goes to show what multi-platform broadcasting is really all about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is the outrage over two highly paid BBC stars behaving like overgrown schoolboys. Hang on, that's Little Britain, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> two people complained who had heard it. Well, they've said there are 27,000 complaints, mm. but most of those are me. Uh, oh, yeah, I quite fancy Friday night chat show. And it's seeing the... Uh, <laughs> I'll do all Jonathan's jobs, but I'll do, I'll, I'll do film, whatever it's called. I know a bit about film. 72. How the talk he's doing. So, yeah, um, <laughs> I'll do the same cool. jobs as him, but I'll do it for 50 quid less. Bet. <laughs> I saw the headline, it said Jonathan Ross suspended, and I thought, well, that'll please the mail. Uh, <laughs> I thought they they'd hanged okay. him. Absolutely, <laughs> that's where I was going. <laughs> but if we go back in time, we'll try it again. <laughs> yes, I saw that Jonathan Ross was <laughs> being suspended, and I thought that'll please the mail. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm nearly getting it, but I want to hear it one more time. time. <laughs> <laughs> it took about thirty thousand complaints for the Beeb to realise that some people might have found this offensive. Mm. The Beeb did its usual thing of moving from um, sort of breathless arrogance and indifference to self-flagellation. Um, of course, over the course of about four days, and eventually the Director General came home from holiday and thought. 
Actually, this probably isn't a very nice thing to have done. But is it really a national emergency? I oh, mean, yes, I mean, yes, 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 I mean, absolutely. Gordon Brown <laughs> had to be pulled out of an economic summit to give his judgement on all this, isn't it? Well, I, it's more important I mean, than economic summits. I mean, that's a failure. Well, the last time we... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the last time we went through this drama was when somebody misnamed a cat on Blue Peter. Isn't that right? Oh. I mean, we're in serious territory. <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> And the brilliant thing about Ross and Brand is they seem to have managed to offend the entire country. Um, so the idea that this, the Guardian obviously felt this was sort of sexist and unpleasant and harassment and uh, the right wing papers were against it. I I'm going to need to know a little more. I've heard about this in the past. Um, I have not heard this tape. Maybe I should listen to it. I'm, I'm going I'm to need some more info on this for those of you that know. Because I, I, I don't know exactly what was said. A little bit, I guess maybe I'm a little bit surprised come about it coming from Jonathan Ross, but I was anybody really surprised coming from Russell Brand? I mean, come on. <laughs> Dude's always been a prick. ...seem to have managed to offend the entire country. Um, <laughs> so the idea that this, the Guardian obviously felt this was sort of sexist and unpleasant and harassment and uh, the right-wing papers were against it. He offended old people, he offended young people. He offended just about everybody. And this impressive. tidal wave of hatred sort of took the BBC by surprise. Yeah. You think... mean we don't pay the licence fee so that you can ring up and say, oh, I had sex with your granddaughter? Is that mm. not cutting-edge comedy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. I wonder if people were more concerned about the fact that, obviously, it is licence fee payers' money being used for this. They've made four calls. They're to Barcelona, that's international rates. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's mentioned the real victim at the heart of this, which is this young woman who came out of a convent oh. and has been <laughs> traduced her reputation damage in this you... way, and is now taking a firm stand for privacy by selling her story to the sun. <laughs> well, the satanic sluts are notoriously well, I didn't private, want to go yeah. there. But... <laughs> Surely she's got a right to privacy, even if she belongs to a burlesque troupe the satanic sluts doesn't ooh, change it. Ooh. The thing is, at a certain age, one longs to have one's privacy invaded. <laughs> <laughs> There's a show on Radio 2 going, if you fancy it. <laughs> <laughs> when we had Russell Brand on this programme, he said that he hadn't been shown sufficient respect. <laughs> I wonder why. Word, perhaps he'll have to relearn. <laughs> What's the sign that things have got really bad for Jonathan Ross? Piers Morgan it is. was fantastically yeah, self-righteous in the mail. That's right. Jonathan oh, Ross shocker. is the worst kind of nasty, gratuitous, insulting, viciously insensitive bully. That's coming from Piers Morgan? Said Piers Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> said Piers Morgan? From his glass house. <laughs> He's right. Said Piers um, Morgan. <laughs> you don't want him to say it. <laughs> but it's interesting the way the political stakes were escalated. On, on Monday, the only politician who could be found to say anything was an anonymous MP who said this is a bit beyond the pale. <laughs> and then by the end of the week, when there were 30,000 complaints, we were all queuing up ten deep to express our outrage. <laughs> and, of course, Gordon came in. What you have described to me appears to me, get me if I'm wrong, that no MPs are interested, and then the general public tells them they should be interested, and then they are interested. That in... seems to me the workings of a democracy. That you've got it in one. <laughs> <laughs> Who's comforting Andrew Sachs' granddaughter now? Max Clifford. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh! You, you keep doing that. <laughs> you get a seance. <laughs> you all sat around this yes. enormous Ouija board and you go, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Come in, running water. Yeah. She's decided that if Russell Brands is going to make that much money out of her, then she'll make a few bob out of the sun as well. Is that so a criticism? Told, is that a criticism? No, it isn't. It's just saying once she was in the public eye, presumably she thought, I will go to the sun and make a little bit of money. Did you see any of the messages of support on Georgina? Bebo page. On a Bevo? what page? <laughs> These questions are extraordinary. Fucking Bebo. Did you oh, see in the on, Daily you... Express? Have you seen her Bebo page? No, of course not. Oh, Bebo. <laughs> I thought you said Bebo. They said, Brian said Ross was trying to impress Brand, who, in my opinion, was a complete. <laughs> <laughs> Sound that. about right. And Bob said, Hi, Georgina. <laughs> 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 I'm the assistant manager at the oh, Candle God. Room nightclub in Kirkcaldy, <laughs> and I'd be very interested in your group making a personal appearance. 
What did fellow radio presenter Steve Pank have to say? Um, this is an outrageous uh, example of what can be a very beautiful art form. <laughs> oh, Paul, you're so marvellously intuitive. Aren't I? Yes. I saw him on the telly saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to add to that, eh? I was having a biscuit at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a cup of tea. <laughs> While wondering why Andrew Sachs's number was always engaged. <laughs> <laughs> he said, this sorry affair devalues the whole currency of Frank Fogel. <laughs> <laughs> Which other madcap comedian behaved badly at the BBC this week? Let's see. Can you hear me now? Now we can. Right, can I ask you a question? Yes, just about. OK, because we've got some good yes. news. We've got some good news about red squirrels last week. Does that mean, do you think, that there'll be many, many more of them in the years to come? What do you mean, good news? You had good news. What are you uh, talking about? Well, I was hoping you could tell me, actually, and elaborate on it. Don't gasp at me. Well, it's all about I the... I don't know what you're talking all about. about the, the, good news? Just hold on a second, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's all about... The, the red squirrels have always suffered because they've been catching a disease off the grey squirrels, and now they appear to be yes. developing some kind of immunity. Is that right? Yes. That's one small part of it, but it won't save them, no. OK. <laughs> Or something, I don't know where you get your news from, really. Right. <laughs> okay, thank you both very much. I tell you what, Kate, <laughs> if he happens to tip overboard on your way over to Branch Yard, and don't pick him out too quickly. <laughs> Let me see both. <laughs> he didn't hear that, did he? That was right. Bye. 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 Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's Bill on Breakfast TV, yes. He was a bit cantankerous, wasn't he? Yeah, but he didn't leave any messages on any owl's answer phones. <laughs> <laughs> He's very pessimistic, you know, Bill. Is he? Yes. About, about the planet. Yes. Do you yeah. think it's all over? He thinks it's pretty well all over, yes. And I noticed the other day he said that, uh, on account of global warming, that his legs are getting shorter. <laughs> really? I, I was in a studio with him the other day yeah. and he could scarcely get up the steps. <laughs> I've heard if he, sticks, if he sticks Velcro on his bottom, he can pick fag ends off the floor. <laughs> this is the row over the obscene <laughs> messages left on Andrew Sachs' answering machine by Russell Brand and Jonathan Ross. It's simply unacceptable for the BBC to chase ratings by humiliating an elderly national treasure. Do you want me to drop my trousers now? <laughs> <laughs> It's lucky for Russell Brand that he resigned before the outcome of the inquiry because the BBC were going to throw the bookie book at him. <laughs> <laughs> Making abusive telephone calls is technically a criminal <laughs> offence. So the lisping TV presenter, Jonathan Ross, could actually end up in prison. If he thinks he has any trouble with his R's now... <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Vince, here's yours. We're well, back to boom and bust. Aren't we? we are. That's presumably That's oil. Yes. That's money, I would guess. Bankers' bonus. This tipping point. <laughs> That's Darling's house for yes. sale. <laughs> <laughs> you should have had his job. I think so too. <laughs> the world economy is going down the toilet. Is that right? It That's is. That's a technical term, Vince. It, it is. Um, what year was this? All started, 06 or 07? The banks oh, have messed things up. They've lent money to the wrong people. My bank is the Royal Bank of Scotland. Right? Oh, yes, I've heard of you. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and, <laughs> and they've advanced vast amounts of money <laughs> to a man called Mr Derry Pasca, who's a friend of Lord Mandelson, to buy a nickel company. Now, if we're talking about repossession, we shouldn't be repossessing people's homes. We should be repossessing his yacht, shouldn't we? <laughs> This, or the nickel company. Vince is the man who knows about the economy. But, I mean, he's so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, this is, this is Doctor Who and this is Doctor Doom. <laughs> no, but, I mean, give us a ray of hope, cock. <laughs> <laughs> Just a gleam. Well, the gleam is that the bankers are enjoying a bit of misery. You know the story that's going around the city at the moment? The difference between a banker and a pigeon? The pigeon can leave a deposit on a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's an bad. estimate about this Pardon week of just how much <laughs> banks around the world have lost so far. Mm -hmm. Would anyone care to tell me what the figure is? It's 2.8... Is it 2.8? 2.8 trillion. 
trillion. To put it in context, with £2.8 trillion, pounds, you could buy 2.8 trillion things at a pound shop. <laughs> <laughs> or two years of Jonathan Ross on the BBC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Which country did the IMF have to bail out this Greece? week? Greece. Hungary. Hungary. Or Britain, if you're watching yeah. the repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Who should chip in to bail out the IMF, according to Gordon Brown? Jonathan Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Bet. Well, that's it. That's sorted out. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I'll fuck it. You see? Cheerfulness. Practical solutions. <laughs> <laughs> Get Paul into the Lib Dems. Exactly. <laughs> that would be a struggle. Mm. <laughs> 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 what, you mean not enough gravitas, <laughs> like Limbit? <laughs> Yeah, that's very cheeky. Yeah. The answer is... <laughs> Who bucked the trend this week, recession-wise? Oh, is it BP? BP earns 70 million quid a day... Oh, and everybody's fuckers. off in arms and surprised. But it's 80p for a bag of crisps in there. It's hardly surprising. <laughs> if I oh. tell you an inside story from the oil industry, and I used to work there... Oh, no, we're uh, thinking we actually people. used to make more money from the sandwiches than the petrol. But it's surely the petrol. We're talking about tasty. BP oil? <laughs> Shouldn't they be abandoning the sort of rather sort of intense process of trying to find oil and just be making sandwiches? It's <laughs> no, it is <laughs> so much more easy. And in fact, if, if we can just make cars that run on sandwiches, yeah. the whole thing is solved. Yeah. Yeah. It, the answer is Volkswagen. Sounds good to me. The answer is Volkswagen, did you say? No, yes. that, may, that may be another answer, but he's actually, the boy is on to it about VP and I'm Shell. I'm 36. <laughs> I'm 36, Tom Baker. Not anymore. <laughs> we learned this week that someone else isn't suffering in the recession. <laughs> Is it Volkswagen? I'm going to say that all night. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Blair, Tony Blair. Ah! Blair. He's... <laughs> 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 Anybody here <laughs> He's become the world's best paid public speaker. He made £12 million last year. Wow. Like a man said, £12 million quid <laughs> since leaving office. I'm the man, you You're see. The man. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. I'm the boy. Yeah. You're the man. <laughs> Let's have a standing up competition here. <laughs> <laughs> Which public figure has been hit hard by the fall in property prices? Is it Volkswagen? <laughs> yes. Well, actually, he's got a point because uh, the he Volkswagen has led actually, to the wiping what? out of hedge funds. So that's actually a very good news story. You've alighted on by mistake, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you get into a private know, eye, I alighted on a news story by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Volkswagen. No, 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 no. It was Prince Charles. Prince oh, Charles. no. Yes, 38 million pounds he lost, yes. Whoa. How? Well, he's gone into negative equity on the whole of Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> and Volkswagen was in the news this week. Yeah! <laughs> Finally! Oh, I know this one. Prince Charles. <laughs> <laughs> this is all to do with hedge funds. Vince won't know no, this, I'm... but... Uh, <laughs> what happens, Vince, is you see... Um, <laughs> The hedge fund people targeted Volkswagen, thinking stupidly the share price was going down, but Porsche had secretly bought in, unknown to everybody else. You can do this under German rules, Vince. It's quite interesting, this bit. And anyway, <laughs> so the share price, it's, it's brilliant, this of Volkswagen, then rocketed. All the hedge fund people lost all their money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's tragic, isn't it, really? <laughs> And finally, what has the Bishop of Lewis, the Right Reverend Wallace Ben, had to say this week? Is it got anything to do with the annual bonfire, at Lewis? No, but no. it's beyond belief. Because they, they, they burn inappropriate people, don't they, on the bonfire at Lewis? Yeah. Well, it's one way of dealing with the old age pensioners. <laughs> <laughs> because they find after 80, they go up like tinder. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what the Right Reverend Wallace Ben had to say. He said that the credit crunch is God's will. What? <laughs> How does he know? I think he was yeah. guessing, actually. <laughs> I don't know what Richard Dawkins would say about it. Oh, boy. He would say, no, it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> Almost probably. So, yeah, probably. Like, probably. Any amount of money on that. Hey, a cocky, eh? Cocky. He's speaking for Richard Dawkins now. Mm. I'm his representative on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but he's on Earth as well. Yeah, I know, there's been a bit of a mix-up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're looking into it at Human Resources. <laughs> In his newsletter, the Bishop of Lewis controversially declared that the credit crunch is God's way of showing his anger at Britain's materialism. And if you think God's angry now, Wait till he sits down in front of his telly and finds that Jonathan Ross isn't on. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the lesser stories of the week, as it doesn't involve two idiots baiting a pensioner. <laughs> 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 After tough negotiations, Britain agreed to help bail out some of the crisis-hit East European countries. Gordon Brown wouldn't reveal what we get in return. But let's just say... He's looking forward to next year's Eurovision Song Contest. Let's go! <laughs> Sweden, Sweden. As the crisis deepened, Gordon Brown flew to Paris to meet President Sarkozy, where, after several hours, they decided to leave an obscene message on the Icelandic <laughs> Prime Minister's answer. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> As two boys do. So, at the end of that round, two points each. Thank you. Damn, he's sending you the points. And now to round two, the jigsaw of news. Fingers on buzzers. Thump, 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 thump. This is the news. Oh. 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 I buzzed. Yeah. Yes. To be fair. That was quick. Are you psychic? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you now, showed I us the picture and then we buzzed, but if the trick is that we listen to the answer and then buzz... <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfectly happy. Is it about Volkswagen? <laughs> <laughs> Someone has invented a way to make the end of this film work. Well, they've worked out a formula of how Michael Caine's character gets the gold bullion off the oh. coach that's balancing on the edge of a cliff. Mm. Yep. The Royal Society of Chemistry has set a contest in which entrants mm. must supply a solution to the literally cliff-hanging final scene of the Italian job. I think I mentioned Dr. This Lewis review, Dardinal, I an astrobiologist, said they could use superconducting magnets to haul the gold to their side of the bus. I'm going to go if they all die. Then he <laughs> added, unfortunately, Gold is not magnetic. <laughs> Shit! And so it would have to be vaporised to a blindingly hot <laughs> cloud of plasma. <laughs> I tried that once. I think it was in the Sontaran experiment. <laughs> Did it work? F***ing disaster. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> this week, a very stupid posh boy attempted to recreate a scene from the Italian job by driving his brand new Mini up some stairs at Bristol University. According to the Sun, he caused the radiator to blow up, the two front tires to burst, and both airbags to explode. Goddamn. Where, as anyone knows, he was only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. Thump, 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 thump. Uh, John Prescott, he did a documentary this week on the subject of class. Yes, yes. Did you catch that, Ian? No, I missed it. I'll just say it again. John Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> this is John Prescott's documentary in which he drives around the country in his Jaguar or sits in the garden of his large detached house, musing on why he's been so cruelly held back by the class <laughs> system. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that it showed John Prescott in a different kind of light. He's a man making a serious documentary about Britain's class system. And he's not just a buffoon who never stops eating. Let's have a look at a few clips. Well, at that time, you don't take the brother Chris a group called Chumba Wumba. It's usually out of a mug. So I just got up and gave him a tap on the side of his ribs and he went on the floor. What? And you need to attack my lads. Again, it's another kind of class attitude. Head button. Yes. <laughs> you got a this one, you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I literally watched like John Prescott I eat for 20 seconds. Yes, no, but what a dreadful oaf. Huh? <laughs> oh, he's a very civilised man. He's going to cut is that it, part of the video Prescott? and make a different video. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dreadful <laughs> oaf. Huh? Oh, he's a very civilised man. Is it, is it? John Prescott? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
What word came up during the filming that John Prescott had never even heard of? Diet. Oh. <laughs> Is it bulimia? Oh, that's unkind. He brought it up. He always brought it up to him. <laughs> when he met three girls off a London estate... Oh, he didn't know what a chav was. He had never heard uh, the phrase chav, had he? Or the word chav, rather. He then wonders what class they regard themselves... Let's have a look. Well, what class are you, then? I'm just, like, middle class. I don't, like... You're I... middle class? Yeah, yeah. I, ain't, I ain't got loads of money. I'm not poor. But I think you're the first one I've seen which I would say you're working class, but you would say you're middle class. But I don't work. <laughs> I agree with her. She's got a point, John. <laughs> she does have a point. <laughs> what disconcerting habit does John Prescott have when being <laughs> interviewed by female journalists, according to Rachel Cook of The Observer? Does he manage to undo their bras with his mind? <laughs> he gets his words in the right order to confuse them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Rachel Cook heard from a female colleague. He hoiked one leg over the arm of his chair so that what she politely called his pelvis was pointing at her like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he doesn't do that to John Humphreys. Really? <laughs> this is John Prescott's documentary on class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Prescott recently promoted his autobiography on the QE2. He was actually uh, on the QE2 for two reasons. One, to try and sell his book, and two, <laughs> ballast. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, at the end of this round, it's Ian and Vince with three, and Paul and Chris with three. Sure, why not? <laughs> round three is the connections round. What do these three oh have my in God. God. Nicholas Sarkozy, Sarah Palin, and Adolf Hitler. They're all morons? Yes. Sarah Palin, uh, she was in the news recently. Uh, she's been impersonated on American television. Adolf Hitler, uh, he was impersonated by Charlie Chaplin uh, in a film called The Great Dictator. Incredible he's been film. impersonated since. And the president of France, wasn't there something about a voodoo doll recently yeah. that uh, he wasn't very happy about? So the connection is they've all been impersonated or, or by objects or by other people. It's dolls, though, isn't I mean, it? They've, they've all got dolls. Adolf there's Hitler a, doll. There, there's Adolf the doll, big hit in Austria. <laughs> No, I've made that up. Oh. <laughs> You're quite right, actually. They have all been immortalised as dolls. Sarah oh. Palin action figures went on sale last month, soon after she was chosen as John McCain's running mate. Yeah, how'd that go, Sarah? Tomb Raider. Palin, ideal for visiting John McCain next year. <laughs> I like mooses. Well, this is quite a good moment for Ian, because he fancies her. Will you get, have you got one of these? Have you got one of these dolls yet, Ian? No, but I'm getting one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and for some reason, the slutty schoolgirl. Ah! Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? That's I what... wanted to meet you so much when I was a kid. So much! <laughs> <laughs> and now look at it. You're still let down. Your dreams are shattered. <laughs> <laughs> one said a Palin fan Ignores. told the Boston Herald, she's hot. She's put the hot in hot. <laughs> yes, but she's also put the alas in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, John McCain was at a rally this head. week and decided to introduce Joe the plumber to the crowds. Joe Biden? Here he is. Joe's with us today. Joe, where are you? Where is Joe? Is Joe here with us today? They boo Joe. Joe, I thought you were here today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you're all Joe the Plumber, so all of you stand up and say, I thank you. <laughs> Yikes. God. I know what it's like, though. What? I think the plumber's coming around. <laughs> I forgot how much Adolf this campaign Hitler tanked. was recently recreated in doll form by the founder of a well-known London knitting circle. What did the designer call her woolen creation? Adorable Adolf Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Adolf Hitler? Wow. Oh. Yeah. Look. Oh my god. <laughs> what? What the fuck? Someone's put some mascara on a cashew nut. <laughs> well, why is he wearing a lime green wrap? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> and there's also the Dalek doll. Oh. In the knitting, it goes knit eight, pearl eight, exterminate eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. To be 
fair, there aren't many knitting Dalek jokes around. You have to... <laughs> yeah, there are the great ones. That's yeah. the best one, to be honest. I crochet. There's <laughs> <laughs> oh. two. Two. The French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, has been immortalised as a doll. Though it's a voodoo doll. Oh, look, they've managed to make him life-size, Paul. <laughs> oh. Free pin for the lazy voodoo practitioner. <laughs> or magnetic pins. If it's a metal thing, don't have to do anything. Yeah. Just introduce the pins to the doll over a distance of 12 feet and... <laughs> 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 but wouldn't that reduce the pleasure? I've been a fool. <laughs> I, completely, I completely withdraw my remarks. <laughs> so, how has the French president reacted? I just. Uh, it's, it's sued, I think. Mean. <laughs> 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 it's not just his image, is it? It's also the bloke off the toilet doors whose image has been nicked. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. furious. I'm absolutely <laughs> furious about the whole thing, and so is my wife. <laughs> You can also get a Tom Baker doll on sale for wow. £12.99 uh, or just three Venusian quarks. <laughs> Look, interchangeable heads. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't like your Tom Baker doll, just wait until it turns into a Sylvester McCoy doll. <laughs> then you'll really hate it. Oh. <laughs> Think of the doctors as bitching about each other's <laughs> 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 Time now for the missing words round. Which this week. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be so far away? Yeah. They're only missing. <laughs> I don't see very well these days, you know. Don't you? No. Did you mention that before the audio cue came out? <laughs> <laughs> and yet, oddly enough, you know, Vince, as my sight diminishes, yeah. I get on much better with people. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> now that I can't see them. And partly because they're not there. <laughs> as, a of fact, as a matter of fact, I've just started a fling with my wife. Have you? Mm. <laughs> if she finds out, she'll be furious. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round which this week <laughs> features as its guest publication, Sheep. <laughs> and we start with, love, mate. I've given up what, said the Dalai Lama. Kissing young boys. Thanks. <laughs> Did you say fags? Fags. <laughs> <laughs> We're free to bet. Giving <laughs> <laughs> up Tom. hope, is it? Yeah. Giving up hope for Tibet? Yes, I think you're right, yeah. A pope for Tibet. <laughs> No, no, no. Given up hope. <laughs> Fish fingers on Friday. <laughs> Did he say fish fingers on Friday? I don't like, I don't like fish. Can we, can we have, can we have crumble? Can we have a crumble? OK, the answer is, he's given up on China. Yeah. So is everybody else. The Dalai Lama says he stopped trying to persuade China to give greater rights to Tibet. According to The Independent on Sunday, shortly before the Olympics, Tibet saw the worst violence in 20 years. Mm. But wasn't the beach volleyball super? <laughs> <laughs> All those jaunty buttocks. <laughs> you to go to school with a bloke called Jaunty yeah. Buttocks. <laughs> He's from Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> jaunty Bucks. <laughs> Next. What can be easily recognised by the long neck, jug head and big ears? Obama. Noddy's close friends. <laughs> the Shropshire sheep. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you always sound as though you're related to them. <laughs> Is it? It's a breed of sheep. Right. Are we going to go through them all? No! <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, yeah. it's a blue-faced Lester. A what? A blue I was at school with a boy called Blue Face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a rapper? Yeah, difficulties, yeah, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next, visiting aliens handbook rule one. What? Uh, Be careful of Tom Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say take me to your leader to a Lib Dem. <laughs> Stay away from Sarah Palin. <laughs> 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 Very simple, no stopping. Oh. Not on earth at all. I mean. No, they do well they, no no they just get off as fast as they can. Do they? Well they do, yes. 
According to the Sunday Times, the latest UFO files have been released by the I government. I say UFO too. Well, I say released. They were left on the line 27 for more than Next. Salty muffins, what? Salty muffins, warm heart. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like that. It's, it's about eating coffee and muffins. You can't eat coffee. <laughs> I mean, you can. can you? Yeah. Things that bad, are we now that bad that <laughs> coffee's become a solid? Yeah. You eat the coffee, Since bread. we started this recording, or beans. money's been abolished. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> It's a barter system out there. Well, I can't understand it. I've got a note here, but it's got Russell Brand's face on it. I mean, what's going on? The answer... It's, it's, it's bad for you. It's a third of your daily intake of salt you have if you have a coffee and a muffin. That's oh. a lot to fit into that space. I'm fucked. <laughs> the answer is alert. Yes. Salty muffin. Any or? particular reason why they were alert? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you now. Oh, OK. This is a report from a salt awareness group. <laughs> Warning, <laughs> breakfast muffins are much saltier than some fried breakfasts. Oh. And they advise people might be better off choosing a low-salt option from a greasy spoon. Oh, that'll be the pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Next, having read and reread sheep from cover to cover, I have now decided... To move what? the whales. I mean, reread and reread sheep from cover to cover, I've now decided I'm not, I'm not bothering with your publication anymore. I realise I've wasted my life. I've spent 15 years living in this bedsit here in Walthamstow, <laughs> getting your magazine once a month, thinking that one day it's going to be good. I turn to the centre fold, it's the same old sheep. So, what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to give up that uh, subscription now and I'm going to go to Cows Weekly. <laughs> the answer is I thoroughly enjoyed it. Bah! <laughs> 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 Next, the world's worst boxer. What Is it fuck? knock self out? <laughs> <laughs> Comes last at Crufts. Ah! <laughs> the answer is, yeah. throws in the towel. Oh, well, ah. yeah, throws in the towel, yeah. yeah. This is Peter Buckley, who is finally retiring after losing a record 256 fights. Holy shit. And finally, what? A common cause of variable crimp. 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 Yeah, so variable crimp. It's when your crimp suddenly goes a bit variable, you know. <laughs> like Walking down the street like this and suddenly saying, hello, hello, there's my crimp gone, my crimp's gone. <laughs> it's going to be variable. And if Am's in a sheep, they hate it because they can't understand. They haven't got brains like us. <laughs> the only answer is parasites. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, the final scores are Ian and Vince have four and Paul and Chris have five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, why not? But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mrs. Ramesses denies long wait in accident and emergency. Are you my mummy? You're not my mummy. I said first. <laughs> Is it Burns night? Oh. <laughs> and I leave you with the news that in a galaxy far, far away, Darth Vader advises the rest of the Federation to give it ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> At London Fashion Week, Naomi Campbell's new PA discovers what happens if you put the wrong flowers in her dressing room. Oh. <laughs> That's something. And as he attempts to escape the media frenzy, Russell Brand relaxes on a beach in Mexico. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>well, late news just in. Top Gears back on BBC Two tomorrow night. Not anymore. Michael Parkinson's heading the racetrack at eight. Next, Pacino after De Niro at the ultimate police manhunt. Heat? In heat. Yeah. All right. Sure, why not? Watch heat. What went right? <laughs> Wait, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> 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 I'll come on
that's how you got the job in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, he's got a nice light touch. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking up Chris Addison, and funny enough, he actually would go on himself to be in Doctor Who. He's also in something that I haven't seen yet, but I'm planning on seeing. He was in the thick of it. He had a starring role in that, and I am planning on seeing that at some point here. He was in Lab Rats, too, which I also might see. We shall see. Um, that episode, I'd say, was, you know, as advertised. Tom Baker... Uh, it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> he was, I, I don't know, I don't know how much, uh, it was him playing it up and how much it is that he's legitimately insane. <laughs> but it works either way. He, he had a great, he had a great dynamic of that show. You could tell Chris was marking out for him the whole time as well. Kind of everybody was, which is what made it so great. Um, so... Uh, we have, I've done every episode that has been majorly suggested to me at this point. If you are not up to date, let me just recap. I'm, I'm pretty sure I could, I, I'm pretty sure I could recite off the top of my head, but just in case, let me pull up the list just so I'm completely sure. The episodes that have I got news for you I've done so far are, are as follows. Um, the episode right after the Angus Deaton controversy came out. The first episode that Boris hosted, the Brucey episode, the Brian Blessed episode, William Shatner episode, I've done the Iowati episode, uh, an episode that Charlie Brooker hosted I've done as well, uh, I've done a Gordon Ramsay hosted episode, I've done the Boris Johnson special tribute episode, and now this. So if there's any episode that are not those that you would like me to see, let me know in the comments down below. But that is it for my ninth technically tenth reaction to have I got news for you, but again, I'm calling it nine. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the video description down below. Thank you to all my patrons also who are named in the video description. If you didn't know, uh, for as little as one dollar or one pound, you can be a patron of mine. In addition to your name in the video description, you also get extra reaction videos as well as a reading comments up to a day early, sometimes more. Uh, for all that being said though, my name is Stafford Steen. My ninth reaction to have I got news for you, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. All of me is Miko Sam Possible. Miko, my name is Taffrey16. Welcome back to another reaction video, and welcome to another reaction, my 10th reaction to Have I Got News For You. So today, we are doing the infamous Tub of Lard episode. Uh, most of you probably know the backstory on this, but just in case you don't, I'll tell you. So this is from 1993. It's actually, I believe, the second Angus Deaton episode I've done. The first one was the first reaction I did to this show, which was shortly after Angus's cheating scandal came out. Uh, in this one... Uh, Roy Hattersley, who was deputy leader of the, leader of the Labor Party for nine years and had recently resigned, who also, fun fact, if anyone didn't know, is still alive, he's 90 years old now, uh, canceled his appearance on the show literally last minute, uh, which pissed them off. Uh, so they replaced him with a tub of lard. And this is the result. Here we go again. Not sure if I've ever seen this dirt in the intro. And if I have to do it. Good evening and welcome to the last in this present series and with it excitingly poised at five games to two to Paul, Ian has only to win tonight to achieve a vital 5-3 defeat. <laughs> uh, in the news this week, as Buckingham Palace prepares to welcome tourists for the first time, the finishing touches are put to the new look trooping of the colour. <laughs> what? Na, 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 On the Newton housing estate, local residents say that joyriders have definitely gone too far this time. Oh. <laughs> And in London, as Norman Lamont ties a rope around his neck in a fit of depression, fellow Conservatives rush to his assistance. <laughs> <laughs>
on uh, Ian Hislop's team, a man who I recently learned represented the United Kingdom at judo, so I'd like to offer him my congratulations now on winning tonight's game and anything else he'd like, Tony Slattery. <laughs> And? and uh, with Paul Merton this week, we were hoping to be joined by the Right Honourable Roy Hattersley, but sadly, and for the third time in our brief history, oh, he's wow. pulled out at the last minute due to having something better to do. So uh, as his replacement, liable to give much the same performance, and imbued with many of the same qualities, we're delighted to welcome a tub of lard. Damn. <laughs> fucking fucking. So, we, uh, <laughs> we um, scream hysterically into round one. Two pieces of mute news per team to which they have to provide the accompanying soundtrack. Ian and Tony, a couple of swells for you. Oh, oily twat. <laughs> this is a story about Michael Mates, which is a very good name for a prick in a cover-up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He's a senior Conservative minister, so obviously he starts giving presents to men who are um, being charged with serious uh, theft offences. It's the natural thing you do. Topical. And on the back of the watch he gives the man, it says, don't let the buggers get you down. <laughs> the buggers being serious law enforcement officers <laughs> who are trying to stop people stealing money. And they do get you down if you're a major crook. Because they try and arrest you, and you end up having to flee the country. Uh, it is the revelation that Government Minister Michael Mates uh, presented Azil Nadir with uh, an inscribed watch shortly before the disgraced tycoon fled to Cyprus. Nadir's own watch had been confiscated by bailiffs, and Mates said he only gave him the replacement so Nadir could keep time. That's as opposed to serving it, presumably. Oh! Uh, Paul and the tube of lard, or indeed tub of lard. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't it be the tub of lard and the other tub of lard? <laughs> oh. I drink. <laughs> uh, Paul and the tub of lard, uh, what's the story behind this piece of film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the... Um, this is the... Uh, story of the uh, New Age uh, travellers blocking the uh, M1 with, I'm sorry, the M5. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? Does, does Ask lard... him. <laughs> you can see how legitimately uh, yes, Paul is uh, too. It's the hippie convoy, you're right, both of you, that uh, deliberately paralysed the M5 on the bank holiday weekend. Uh, the chief constable of Avon and Somerset so the hip said the hippies had no right to block the motorway like that. That was the job of the police <laughs> cone laying department. Uh, Ian and Tony, a heart-rending story for you. That's oh. the Lloyds building. It's a speciality prostitute. <laughs> Um, oh my god, it's Mary Archie, you shouldn't, I shouldn't really say that. <laughs> 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 oh dear. And that was Jeffrey Archer has just given her £5,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he couldn't have done because he's met her, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not at a railway station. <laughs> mm. Well, this is a very, very sad story indeed. Mm. Um, a number of Conservative MPs... <laughs> 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 have been wiped out by their losses at Lloyd's. Oh, no. Um, which is very sad. Yes. And the, <laughs> the toughest thing is if, if, you're, if you are wiped out, you have to go to the hardship committee, which involves seeing Mary Archer. Oh, that is hard. <laughs> that's, that's hard. It is true, yes. It's, um, the news that a number of High Court judges and Tory MPs may have to resign if they're bankrupted by their losses at uh, Lloyd's Insurance. One Lloyd's name, Judge Barrington Ward, uh, lost a quarter of a million pounds. That was a bit short-sighted. Should have insured against it. The, uh, <laughs> the affected judges are now demanding to be let off their debts. The government say the only people qualified to decide if that's permissible are judges. So, uh, no rats to be smelt there. Uh, Paul and the tub of lard. Bit uh, formal. Can't we call him Tubby? Tubby. OK, Paul and Tubby. Uh, <laughs> name... Mr. Lard to you. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Viper. <laughs> <laughs> 
Paul and Lord Lard. Uh, <laughs> Lord Lard. Names in the past for you. Uh, yes, Winston Churchill. Um, <laughs> visit <laughs> <laughs> visiting the Tub of Lard Clinic. Uh, <laughs> Winston Churchill said that yeah. some cities had 50% immigrant population, Correct. and it's not true. No, it's, it's not true. It's only about sort of 10% or something. Yes, well, it was. It was Winston Churchill. Bad luck Churchill, Winston, Winston Churchill, isn't it? Mm. Come out with a crummy speech on immigration. We shall fight them on the barges. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, forget it. Mm. We've I think we're getting more value out of the tub of lard. <laughs> It is Winston Churchill MP who uh, said in a speech that immigrants make up 50% of the population of some cities, whereas in fact uh, it's uh, no more than 17%. Baroness uh, Srila Flather hit back, claiming what he is saying is that he doesn't like brown faces. Well, Ooh. he'll never make a cabinet minister. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, unerring accuracy brings us faltering to the end of this opening stanza. <laughs> and the naked truth at this stage is that uh, both Ian and Tony and Paul and the tub of lard have a small but ample fall. Good job, Lordy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we turn to Michael Winner's underpants. Uh, two weeks what? ago, in our Odd One Out round, whilst referring to Miss Simone Hyams making love to the film director, Mr. Michael Winner, we alleged Miss Hyams said Mr. Winner's wife fronts were unwashed. We accept Miss Hyams uh, did not say this. We would like to emphasize that Mr. Winner's underpant hygiene is of the very highest caliber. <laughs> When she said they were unwashed, they just might have been new. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's doubtless the case, I think. I don't think you should apologise. I think we should go to trial and see if the underpants stand up in court. <laughs> I agree. Bring it on. Which, uh, which, of course, they wouldn't, because they're unblemished. Yeah. <laughs> so it's time to shake our uh, second round warmly by the throat as we ask each panellist to explain some cryptic illusion from the tabloids. Paul, what scam is this? Just holding hands wasn't enough for Jackie. Uh, Jackie this is the sad demise of Jackie magazine, which has been running for many years, um, and it's had to stop publishing because it hasn't its uh, photo stories or whatever just aren't strong enough. You mean dirty enough? Yes, it's being re reinvented and it's going to be called Teenage Death Shag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could happen. It could, could happen. happen, it probably has. Yes, it probably will do. Uh, Jackie is famous for passing on crucial tips to countless teenagers, such as how to practice your first French kiss on a pillow instead of a boy's tongue. <laughs> Although uh, any girl who can get a pillow into her mouth wouldn't need any tuition. <laughs> One of its pitfalls was that, unlike its rivals, it never had to deal with real-life issues, such as how to put on a condom, unless you wanted to know how to put a condom on a pillow, presumably. <laughs> uh, one of Jackie's rivals, Miz, this month, goes into detail... Well, you get a condom over a pillow. It's a very good point, and well made, I think. Thank <laughs> <you>. <laughs> I bet the tub of lard put you onto that yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, if you had a tub of lard, you could put a condom on a pillow. <laughs> Tub of lard, a curious claim for you. No conferring. Uh, <laughs> sex, beer and neat moustaches solve riddle of the pyramids. Well, since he can't do it, I think... Hang on a minute. It. <laughs> yeah. I haven't given him a He's chance He's only just yet. seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Leave him alone. He can't see the monitor from there anyway, look. <laughs> No, I don't think he's going to get it, Ian. You better help us Is out. Is this the... Um, <laughs> all right, go on. Um, the fact that they've discovered that the pyramids weren't built by slaves at all, but were built by people who wanted to build the pyramids, who were sort of builders, more or less. And um, they, they had <laughs> who sex didn't get paid? and neat moustaches. Is it something to do with mummies and uh, esophaguses? <laughs> That's a part of the fruit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they found... Sarcophaguses, sorry. There you <laughs> go. It's the queen mummy got something stuck in her throat. <laughs> a pillow, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> might have been a tub of lard, you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, ben. Yeah, I'm going to have to give you two points. It's, it's completely right. It's the discovery that the pyramids were built, uh, not by slaves, but by professional builders. Uh, the work took 70 years, although the original estimate said they'd be out in five <laughs> weeks. <laughs> it's only a score for team, then score with my missus. Oh, yes, I read this. this is an American uh, football uh, team. And the coach of this team gave his teenage players an incentive that if they did 
Very simple, really. If they did well, they could shag his wife. Wow. But apparently, no, there was a sliding scale. I haven't heard of one. <laughs> back, to, back to Lard again. Um, you've the, put uh, it, yes. You know, if, if, if they scored uh, one point or whatever, they got oral sex. It was all rather, all rather saucy, really. <laughs> and illegal. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's um, American football coach Randy Brown, who's uh, been on... No, no, that wasn't his name. <laughs> it, wasn't. it wasn't. Randy Brown, no. who's, uh, he's been on trial with his wife in California after offering her as an incentive to his underage team. A good pass was rewarded with a kiss, a vital tackle was rewarded with oral sex, and every goal was rewarded with full sex. Just as well they don't have penalty shootouts in American football. <laughs> what about the goalkeeper? He didn't get much of a look in, I'm afraid. No. What, uh, what, what do you mean by vital tackle? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you mean what, very what energetic? You mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, something along those sorts of lines, yes. Uh, they've both been on trial anyway, and Mrs. Brown's now gone down for five years. <laughs> so, uh, no change there. And finally, Ian, one man's fight for justice. Just the ticket for revenge. I think this is the Hoover story. Might be. Henry Hoover. <laughs> There's a, a man who's kidnapped a Hoover van. He, oh. was the, he was one of those people who joined a competition where um, you were meant to get free flights if you bought a Hoover. And he didn't get any. And he was so annoyed that he kidnapped a van. And he said to Hoover, if you don't give me the tickets, I'm going to keep this van. So fly me to Barbados or the van gets it. <laughs> It's uh, engineer David Dixon of Seaton, Cumbria, who uh, bought a washing machine from Hoover in order to take advantage of their free flight offer. Uh, Hoover wouldn't cough up the tickets and the washing machine broke down, so Mr Dixon has kidnapped the Hoover repair van that came round to fix it until he gets his tickets. The washing machine in question has started moving all over the kitchen of his own accord, knowing Hoover the quickest way he'll get to America is to sit on it and point it west. <laughs> Which further instalment of uh, the Hoover saga heralds the end of this uh, middling round and the story so far is that uh, rather intriguingly, neither side is prepared to break from the pack, both Ian and Tony and Paul in the tub of lard, uh, settling for an equivalent Eight. Guts in the bag, Tubby. <laughs> and so with customary reticence, we enter our trifling odd one out round for National Heroes, which is the Graham Taylor. Paul, <laughs> uh, your hideous concoction is uh, Sir David Frost. Mm -hmm. Virginia Wade. Lovely. The Bishop of Galway. Gorgeous. As Lovely. well. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> someone else. Is that right? <laughs> Virginia Wade's the only one who's been hit, recently hit in the nose by a tennis ball. Um, oh. <laughs> David Frost has had his fingers super glued to plate and cup. Um, <laughs> the tub of luck, the Roy Hattersley, <laughs> uh, Bishop of Galway, um, it's fathers, David Frost's father was a priest, and Roy Hattonley's father was a priest, um, <laughs> and Virginia Wade's father was a priest. Perfect answer it is that each one is nice. a child of a clergyman, except the Bishop of Galway, who's a clergyman with a child. Uh, before the scandal broke, <laughs> the Bishop was quoted as saying, the things you do in life are not meant to bear fruit in your lifetime. <laughs> Not if you're a Roman Catholic priest, they're not. Ooh. And Roy Hattersley's father was a Roman Catholic priest. Uh, they, as we know, take lifelong vows of celibacy. If only he'd stuck to his. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, tub of lard, a rather easy one for you. Uh, Princess Diana. Scylla Black. Barry Manilow. And Pinocchio. Is it Barry Manilow? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Oddly. What's the, um, what's Nose the jobs. Scylla Black's had a nose job, uh, and all the others have had nose jobs, apart from Barry Manilow, who clearly wouldn't have paid money for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's another two points to, uh, <laughs> to the tub. Bar, yes. Oh, yes, and Paul. Um, Are you saying Princess Diana's had a nose job? We might be. Can you prove that? We might be about to be proving it to you <laughs> with some photographs. Good. Can you wait? Well, I hope that stands up and cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the photos look a bit like it. Yeah, we tried that one. No, it's a cheap. About half a million. We're not actually saying it. Uh, we're we're alleging alleging that the uh, Daily Star said that they had. Ah, oh, that's brave one. of you. Mm. <laughs> 
uh, is that they've all had nose jobs with uh, the sole exception of Barry Manilow, as he can't afford the scaffolding costs. Scylla <laughs> um, Black's nose is 25 years old, she's 50 years old, and her jokes on blind date are 75 years old. Oh. Uh, Pinocchio is famous for his wooden nose, which got longer and longer every time he told a lie. We understand the government's arms to Iraq inquiry has a carpenter on permanent standby. <laughs> In 1982, Diana disappeared from public view for three months and came back, according to top plastic surgeon Eric Jackson, uh, with a reshaped nose. Here's before and after. Diana's always uh, denied yeah, it, I but unlike Pinocchio, her nose seems to have got smaller rather than well, larger. that's conclusive. In one picture she's looking down, in the next one she's looking up. <laughs> that's a good point. I reckon the Daily Star's made its case pretty mm. well. Are you poo-pooing this in? Are you um, standing up for the princess? Sounds here? like a winner joke. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> No, I'm standing up for the princess. Oh, good. More than Charles ever did. <laughs> oh. In bed, anyway. Mm, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> just, just Why would he stand up in bed? <laughs> National good anthem point. might be playing on the radio. <laughs> you might have a tub of lard, Andy, you never know. It's only four paragons of virtue for you. Uh, Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, Cynthia Payne. Madonna and Lord Bath, formerly Viscount Weymouth. They are the same hair except Madonna. Goodness. Is it something to do? Is it? Is it uh, something to do with baths? No. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Is it beds? Beds. Um, not entirely. No. <laughs> we just going through the whole house now. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Is, is it Hoover? Beginning with B. No. Damn. Is it that um, the Queen and whatever his name is? and Cynthia Payne have um, opened their houses to the public and Madonna has opened um, <laughs> her heart. Yes. Um, irritatingly, it's completely correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, well done. Good job, tell the Lord. Yes, uh, apart from the heart bit. Uh, the answer <laughs> is that uh, all of their homes are or have been open to the public, except Madonna, who this week discovered that security guards had been charging members of the public $100 a time to have sex in her bedroom. She was furious wow. when she found out. Complete strangers have been doing it in her bed. She'd known she'd have set the video running. <laughs> and, uh, and finally, in this round, Ian. Four cheeky chappies for you. Saddam Hussein. Oh, my God. Pol Pot. Tung Chao Ping. So what did that say in the background? And finally in this round, Ian. Spider Buddy Dad is jail. What the fuck does that mean? Four cheeky chappies for you. Saddam Hussein. Pol Pot. Tung Chao Ping. Oh, I get the light-hearted one, and do I? <laughs> Bosnian President Alia Izidbegovic. Um, Say so I have five times first. I think this is a, a, an arms question. It's a... Uh, I mean, there are three of these people who are extremely unpleasant dictators. <coughs> Pol Pot, Saddam Hussein, Deng Xiaoping. That chap's the president of Bosnia, and he's not. So, which three have our government supplied arms to? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and which one have we refused? <laughs> yep, it's Mr. Bosnia. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, the president of Bosnia, as he's the only one whom the British government feels it would be morally wrong to give military assistance to. Really? In the past five years, the UK has trained and armed more than half the world's countries, uh, keeping up the traditional British values of hard work, fair play, and sending Johnny Foreigner off to an early grave. <laughs> the, uh, the cases of Saddam Hussein and the butcher of Tiananmen Square, Deng Xiaoping, are well documented. Uh, less well known is the fact that the Khmer Rouge-led coalition, which uh, maims so many women and children with landmines that Cambodia's medical system has collapsed, has been trained to do so by instructors from the SAS and MI6. Uh, the government has denied that the British military uh, directly trained the Khmer Rouge. They say our troops were training a totally different set of guerrillas to maim civilians who just happened to come under the direction of the Khmer Rouge. Really? So that's all right then. Of course. Rule Britannia, Britain never, never, never shall own up to anything if we can get away with it. Uh, all of which military madness uh, marks an end to this exhausting exercise and the current enthralling situation is that, uh, well, Ian and Tony have a slightly poor a 10 and Paul and Tub of Lard have a virtually impressive 14. Let's go! <laughs> So, after that gruelling tussle, our four trusty panellists have now to tackle our final missing words round. 
Ian and Tony, entirely human teams first, so stand by your beds. Uh, Major eases what? Himself into Lamont's welcoming buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I know it's, it's not... <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like a pub somewhere in the countryside. <laughs> the welcoming buttocks <laughs> welcomes careful drivers. <laughs> I know. Uh, Do you take access? Of course, sir. <laughs> I know it's not satire, it, but it's just quite a funny image. It's a hideous <laughs> Man who made love to pavements. Oh. Welcomes careful drivers. <laughs> I know. Uh, Do you take access? Of course, sir. <laughs> I know it's not satire, it, but it's just quite a funny image. It's a hideous it. image. Is it the pain? Oh, it is the pain. Extraordinary, oh. you should say that. Major uh, uses and the pain of what? Correct. Uh, no one knows. Uh, <laughs> next, uh, Diana tells of pain caused by what? I know this, and I'm not going to <laughs> to tell. To t <laughs> it's a pill for every ill. Is absolutely correct. Astonishing. Uh, this has never happened before. Um, <laughs> next, Mary Archer saves what? Bogies for later. <laughs> Major's so, neck reputation. Major's neck is, is spot on again. Major uh, pulled a bit top, of a he, he is actually. Uh, top judges face huge bills over what? Is uh, it a giant duck case? <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd's losses, this one. It is Lloyd's losses. And uh, and lastly, Brilliant. can we get five out of five? Lamont ready to rattle what at Major? Thresher bag full of empty <laughs> bottles. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's what Tony says, it's welcome in buttocks. <laughs> You can't rattle buttocks, can you? It's meant sure to keep his change. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the Romans used to keep it in their mouth, didn't they? Yeah, yes. Well. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm done with this uh, one. Ready to rattle... Um, Skeletons. Is right. Well, well done. Very well good done. indeed. In the closet. Thank you. So, um, Paul and the Tub of Lard, uh, here are your headlines, which, uh, as it's our last show, have something of an international flavour. Uh, Monsieur Clinton, sa prêtre de changer what? <laughs> Mm. Right, well, bearing in mind that I did metal work. <laughs> right, Miss, uh, yep. M. Monsieur Clinton. So, rap, what does that sound like? So, rap, don't know what that is. Not changes the. Uh, Mr. Uh, is it um, di uh, Director of Media Communications? No, it's Monsieur Clinton s'apprêterait à changer de underpants. <laughs> Oui, Monsieur Clinton s'apprêterait à changer des pantalons pristinement blanc de Michael Winner. <laughs> That's allegedly. Um, allegement. If anyone's interested, I can make a trowel. <laughs> is it a uh, director of. Yes, Mini yes, your director de la communication is oh. absolutely oh. right. Okay. Um, I next, think we got uh, that. We got that. Die Bank von England gibt grosser what to? Well, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, <laughs> <laughs> Angus, I know what? this. Yeah, we know what? this. I know this. Die Bank von England gibt grosser stinkpansen. Der britische Filmendirektor. And, and, and his wife, Zoo. <laughs> Grosser amounts of money to fat Bundesbankers. Uh, nine, it's uh, Besorgnis. It's the. Uh, is Bless the, you. <laughs> amazed you didn't am I, get am I, I'm not in one of John Simpson's trips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here with a tub of lard trying to answer questions in German. <laughs> Well, we shan't ask another one in German. Well, good. Next, what cap oh, symbol? Yarotsky is <laughs> RCE. Well, it's not Michael Winner because the second word's cack. Look. <laughs> no. Some of those letters are upside down. <laughs> they like it like that. What's that one at the end? It looks like a sort of seagull flying on. <laughs> It's Russian. That's an A. Oh, it's Russian. Oh, I do beg your pardon. It's Russian. <laughs> is it, allowed is, to do is that. it Yeltsin? Yeltsin? Uh, no. Is it slightly... Yeltsin? <laughs> <laughs> I must have been off sick the day we did this at school. <laughs> 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 it, 
Uh, Yelp is it, is the tub of lard's no bloody good, look! <laughs> this is made in the EEC here, I've not had a word out of it. <laughs> is it. Is it perestroika or something? Or uh, something it's like nothing that? even Big Mac, like potato. That. It, it's slightly closer to home, it's actually Lord Owen. It's, no! Uh, <laughs> next up is... Oh. <laughs> Rocky Hall... Can I say cure what? Is it bean fried rice? <laughs> It's, uh, it's actually... It's Gary Rineker. <laughs> Saibitsu is actually the answer I was looking for. Uh, which what, means what, what, what does that word mean? Labour standard law. Oh, oh. <laughs> and, um, and finally, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fish found on moon, antelope on bicycle. Potato cures boredness. <laughs> Flames mad vicar. Um, is he TV's Angus shagging Merton's wife? <laughs> but it's close. It's actually DLT quits Radio 1. Now so you say it, it's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> <I know. laughs> Which valiant attempts at linguistic competency is oh, we are way to the end of this round programme and indeed series. And the final showdown seems to have ended with the hardly satisfactory conclusion that this week's down and outs are Ian and Tony with 16, and this week's upwardly mobiles are Paul and the Tub of Lard with 20. Good job, Ray. It is getting rather sad when I can't, <laughs> I can't win against Paul when he's accompanied by a tub of lard <laughs> and the questions are in a foreign language. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did everything we could, Ian. But, uh, <laughs> I feel like Graham Taylor. <laughs> On which uh, erudite note, we say thank you to our guests, Ian Hislop and Tony Slattery, Paul Merton and the Tub of Lard, whom we wish well in its new job as presenter of Holiday 93. <laughs> and uh, I leave you with news that uh, at the British end of the Channel Tunnel, there are fears that the new rolling stock may leave something to be desired. <laughs> Across the Atlantic, Bolivian television unveils one of the team captains for the South American version of Call My Bluff. Whoa. <laughs> And finally, Virginia Bottomley performs her famous shadow puppet of a Thai prostitute. <laughs> good night. That's really good. Well, a tub of lard MP. <laughs> Gonna go out on a limb and say they never asked Mr. Hattersley back. Yeah, probably a fair guess there. I actually didn't know it was the third time he had cancelled. I mean, Jesus, I can only, ima I can only imagine. I, I figured they were just fine to him cancelling the last minute anyway, but um, third time? Yeah, that makes a lot more sense, too. You could just tell how visibly annoyed Paul was during that whole thing, but he made the best of it. The segment about the different languages was hilarious, too. But I, I wonder, has Hattersley ever talked about why? He cancelled the show? Did he just like... Would, just got cold feet? Or did he just like not like them and he was trying to fuck with them? Or I wonder like... I legitimately wonder what his reason was. Or is he just not respect ever people's time? If so, he should move to Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Let me know. If he ever said the reason, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, per usual... Um, if you'd like to see, I'll be doing the show around, so if there's an episode that, of Have I Got News for You that I haven't seen that you would like to see, let me know. Let me pull this up real quick, because in case you don't know, uh, here are the episodes I've done so far. Uh, a, the episode right after Angus Deaton's Scandal came out, uh, the Boris Johnson, the first episode he hosted the full Boris... Um, the Bruce Forsyth episode, the Brian Blessed episode, the William Shatner episode, uh, one of the Richard Ayoade episodes, he's hosted a lot of them though, uh, Charlie Brooker episode, which was recent, um, a Gordon Ramsay hosted episode, uh, the Boris Johnson tribute special, excuse me, and also a Tom Baker hosted episode, and of course this. So, there's anything you didn't see here or there, there's, I mean hundreds of episodes 
of the show. So, I mean, we could go for this forever. There's 571 to date, uh, to be exact. Um, so, yeah, we, we could go forever with this. But that is going to do it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the video description down below. Thank you to all my patrons, also named in the video description for supporting me and my channels. If you didn't know, you, you could be a patron of me for as little as one dollar one pound, and you get access to direction videos as well as a reading comments up to date early, sometimes more. Well, that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. It's been my 10th reaction. Have I got news for you? And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.